Welcome back aviators, this is Wizard again with part 2 of the 72nd Virtual Fighter Wings Ramp Start Video Guide. If you have not already watched part 1, the cockpit interior check video, then do so now before you start this, otherwise you will have several switches not in the proper position and your ramp start will likely fail. Let's get the ramp underway. Start with the electrical control panel, moving our main power switch from off to battery. See the Flickus relay light has come on. On the test switch control panel, move our Flickus power test switch to test, hold it down, and see that the Flickus power lights have come on, indicating the four relays have closed. The Flickus relay light has been replaced with two Flickus, and we see the Flickus PMG light is also now visible. Flickus power test switch back down to normal. Flickus relay light has come back on, so move our main power switch up to main power. Verify Flickus relay light is lit. EPU Gen and EPU PMG are not lit. That's where the mouse cursor is right now. In the enunciator panel, we've got the electrical system and the secondary caution lights. And on the right eyebrow, the engine and hydraulic oil pressure lights are also lit. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close our canopy now and look in the upper left part of the screen to make sure it says chocks are in place. If you're using IVC, now is the time you'd want to check in on channel 6 to make sure your UHF backup controls actually work. Let's go ahead and move our jet fuel starter now to start 2, and the JFS light should come on next to it within 30 seconds. See the RPMs are starting to move already as the JFS gets our engine ready for engine light. What we're looking for is about 20% RPM and the secondary caution light to extinguish itself. When that happens, we're going to move our throttle from off to idle. There it is. There's our throttle moved up to idle now. See the engine starting to spool up. It'll actually light about 10 seconds after moving your throttle to idle. And our FTIT is also climbing. At 55%, the JFS light should go off. There it went. At 60%, the engine light goes off when the main generator comes online. And somewhere between 15 and 70% RPM, the hydraulic and oil pressure light extinguishes itself also. It appears we have a good light, so let's run some engine checks now that we're stabilized at idle speed. We've got a fuel flow between 700 and 1700 pounds per hour. Oil pressure indicating greater than 15 psi. Nozzle position greater than 94% open. RPMs are stabilized between 62 and 80%. Fan turbine inlet temperature less than 650 degrees Celsius. And hydraulic pressure for channels A and B should be between 28 2850 and 3250 or about 12 o'clock on the needles. So that's good. We're going to move back over to the test switch control panel now. Move our probe heat switch up to probe heat. Take a look at the enunciator panel. Ensure that the probe heat light is not flashing or on at all. Move our probe heat switch down to test now and look at the enunciator panel again and there's probe heat flashing at us. That's good. Move the fire and overheat, or push the fire and overheat detect button. Look on the right eyebrow, it should say engine fire, and on the enunciator panel, overheat. Oxygen quantity switch, flip that up. The oxy low light should come on on the right eyebrow, and 10 seconds after flipping that switch, it should automatically extinguish itself. All right. And now hold down the malfunction and indicator lights button so we can listen to the voice messaging system and check all the lights in the cockpit. Pull up. Altitude. Warning. Gamma. Counter. Cat flare. Low. Out. Lock. IFS. Caution. Bingo. Data. All right, so that check has turned out good, so we'll turn those back off now. Moving over to our far right on the avionics power control panel, we're going to turn on our modular mission computer, store station system, MFDs, upfront controls, GPS, and data link. Move our INS knob to align norm. Move forward to the sensor power control panel, left and right hard points off unless required. Left hard point for TFR and FLIR, right hard point for HTS and targeting pod. FCR switch to FCR and radar altimeter up to radar altimeter. Move to the sim wheel now on the left hand side of our ICP and get our HUD turned on. 
And then over to the auxiliary communications panel and turn our communications navigation and interrogation knob from backup to upfront controls. And pull up the test page on one of our MFDs and clear the main fault list. And now we are ready for testing the secondary controls of our engine. So we'll move our engine control switch from primary to secondary. Verify the secondary caution light is on on the enunciator panel and that our nozzle position has dropped to less than 10% within 30 seconds of doing so. The way this check works with the GE129 engine is that we're going to snap our throttle from idle to mill power and when RPMs reach 85% we're going to snap it back down to idle. This runs a very real chance of jumping the chocks however so we're first going to engage our tow brakes and now snapping the throttle to mill power back down to idle and all the engine instruments responded as expected and the operation felt smooth so that was a successful test release the tow brakes now that we're stabilized at idle move our engine control switch from secondary back up to primary ensure the secondary light extinguishes itself and that our nozzle position has gone back to greater than 94 percent so now we're going to cycle our flight controls fully to remove air from the hydraulic system as well and assist in warming up the hydraulic fluid and we're going to look on the flight control panel now and run our flickest bit. When this is moved from off to bit it locks itself in position and the run light comes on above it. It takes about 45 seconds to run through its thing so we'll check that once uh, we do get a couple other things out of the way. Move to our ECM control panel and turn our ECM power on. Audio 2 control panel turn ILS on. Move up to our RWR power and push the system power power button there and on the CMDS control panel we'll turn on the interface between the RWR, the jammer, and the CMDS allow it to dispense chaff and flares and set our mode to what I personally run which is semi-automatic that's a pilot discretion there fully open our speed brakes and then fully close them the auto degrade methods on the CMDS is because I do not actually have a jammer equipped for this TE Verify we've got three green lights on our landing gear indicator. And then we'll now we'll move to the fuel quantity select panel. We're going to start by moving the fuel quantity select knob from norm to test. Verify that the needles indicate approximately 2,000 pounds plus or minus 100. The totalizer should read 6,000. And we should have the forward fuel low and aft fuel low lights on in the enunciator panel. We do. So now we'll move to the normal position. The aft left needle should indicate between 2675 and 2810 pounds, and the front right needle between 3100 and 3250. Reservoir setting should have both needles dropped to between 460 and 480 pounds. Internal wing between 525 and 550 pounds, unless you have conformal tanks, in which case it's 2000 to 2100. External wings, I have an asymmetrical load for this purpose. The left side of my aircraft has a 370 gallon tank and so that needle should display between 2300 and 2420 the right wing is carrying a 600 gallon tank which should never mind what the needle says right now display 3750 to 3925 and last but not least the reason I don't have the jammer is because I put a center line on to show you that with the center line tank the aft left needle should read zero and the front right needle between 1800 and 1890 so now we're going to move our fuel quantity select knob back to the normal position and we are going to lean over to check our EPU fuel between 95 and 102 percent and that's all good. Take a quick moment to check our flickest bit. You see the bit switch has gone back down to the off position and the run light has been extinguished. The fail light below it has not lit up so the flickest has successfully passed its bit. On the right MFD now, we will pull up our data transfer equipment page and load our DTC because we're about to program all of our avionics. All right, so we're going to start with, uh, I work left to right, top to bottom, so start with your uniform controls, COM1. We use uniform 15 for the tower in the 72nd, that's what I've already loaded. Victor control, whatever your flight briefing required you to be on for your VHF radio channel. List 2, we'll set our bingo values. List 0, 8, 
brings you to your bullseye page. You can toggle the display of the bullseye on the HSD or in fire control radar with the zero key. I recommend that on. List enter takes you to your data link page. If you hit sequence on your data control switch, you can enter in other data link values for flights within your package. Go into our air to air master mode now and ensure that we have the right weaponry pulled up for our air to air master mode. We do. Back out of that, go into air to ground master mode and set up your control page settings for your air to ground ordnance, uh, arming delays, burst altitudes, release angles, etc. Check your nose, tail, or nose and tail fuse settings depending on your weapon. The more information on that can be found in the avionics and non nuclear weapons delivery manual. Don't forget to set your single or pair release as well as the amount of ripple quantities and your bomb spacing. While you're here, set your selected jettison. There's those fuel tanks. And then last but not least, check your override modes. MRM override. And I do have the AIM-120 selected with that, so I'll cancel back out of that and go into my dogfight override. Make sure that I've got my heater selected. Excellent cancel out of that and back out of air to ground master mode now. Dropping down on the ICP to the TACN ILS page, you set your TACN channel. I've already got the main controls entered in for the tower here at Chung Wan. Uh, don't forget that you do have the auxiliary communications channel or auxiliary communications control panel with your backup TACN channel. Set that as, your, as you des desire. Go into your ALO page now and set your low altitude advisory and your MSL floors. Steer points for precision GPS steer point information. Cruise page, hit a couple times until it says home. Make sure that it's calculating the home plate where you actually intend to land at. That's how it calculates your bingo value. It doesn't do you any good if that's not where you're going to land. And we are now ready to move on to the next step. So we've got our MFDs set as we desire now for the nav master mode. I like having my HSD on there. And we are going to move on to checking the digital backup of our Flickus. So first we're going to move our digital backup switch from off to digital backup. Verify the DBU light is on on the right eyebrow over there. Look at the canopy and cycle our flight controls. Make sure that the digital backup can operate them properly. All seems good there. So now we'll move our digital backup switch to off. Verify the DBU light has extinguished itself. We're back on primary Flicka software now. We're going to do a tri trim check on the manual trim control panel by moving our trim AP disconnect switch down to disconnect. Activating our trim controls and you can see the indicators are not moving and our ground crew would be informing us that we have no control surface movement. Move our trim AP disconnect back up to norm and activate trim controls and you can see now that the roll indicator is in fact moving and our ground crew would hopefully be telling us that the flight control surfaces are also responding to this. Check the pitch trim and the yaw trim. Excellent. Now we'll move up to the manual pitch override check which is done by fully deflecting your flight controls forward which I've done. Looking down to the manual pitch override, moving it to override and verifying that the horizontal stabilizer has gone down farther than normal. It has. And now we'll release the manual pitch override switch back to normal. And you can see that the controls are back to their normal position. If track IR would cooperate here. Let's try again. There we go. All right, so now we'll just cycle our flight controls entirely and make sure everything is working normally again. They are. Move to the aerial refueling check now. Move our air refuel switch from close to open. You see the ready light to the right of the HUD. Push our air refueling disconnect button on the side stick controller. You'll see it says disconnect and in three seconds it auto cycles back to ready. Move our air refuel switch down to close now and we are going to check our EPU. First we're going to turn our EPU from normal to off and then back to normal. This is another test that involves the possibility of jumping the chocks so we're going to use our toe brakes for this. With the GE29 engine we're going to advance our RPMs to 10% above idle. Now 
Now we're going to look on the test switch control panel and our EPU gen switch over there is going to be moved up to the EPU gen and we're watching to see if the EPU actually turns on. You can see the EPU air light is not coming on neither is the run indicator so we're going to let go of that switch advance our throttle 5% more. You can run up to the max of 90 with this engine but we'll just try 85% now and rerun the check. EPU gen test switch once again to EPU gen there's the air light, there's the EPU run light, our Flickus power lights have come on, the EPU is providing power to our Flickus, give it a count of five, and then go ahead and let go. Throttle the engine back down to idle now. And we're going to go ahead and give our tower a call and request the Q&H for our Colesman. Cowboy 1-1, one, one, copy. Cowboy 1, Chengju approach 30062. So we'll enter in the value we just received from tower in our Colesman window to have the proper pressure altitude. It's 3062. You can see our INS page and our HUD are both showing us that we are aligned and ready to go. So we'll move to our INS knob and move that to nav now. When we are aligned in the 72nd, we take our position lights and move them from flash to steady. And last but not least, we're going to take our land lights, landing taxi lights and move it up to the landing position because the taxi is not implemented. And that indicates to our flight lead that we are ready for taxi, which we will continue with the next video. Thanks for watching.